Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Today in this video we're looking at uh, pressure and how it affects uh, the Earth's interior, the layers, the rock, and basically how we really can't explore any further down than really seven miles. I mean, possibly with higher technology, with more time, we could get down further. But really, the pressure issue, not so much the temperature, definitely pressure is the overall factor of how we can't really go down uh, very deep and uh, experience things for ourselves actually at the location. And the pressure is quite incredible. So if we're looking at the Earth's interior, and in previous videos we looked at the temperature, and we saw the temperature goes from on the surface is an average of 55 degrees, which is around like 12 degrees Celsius, sorry, 12 degrees Fahrenheit. This is still Fahrenheit there. That's the average on the surface. And then as you're down deeper through the layers, you're getting down to around you know, 6,700 degrees Celsius or above 9,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is in the core. Now we know that from the Bowen's reaction series where um, Bowen looked at the melting points of different um, minerals and when they crystallize and come out of the melt. So in terms of Bowen's reaction series, the hottest temperature where we found that, you know, all of the minerals became liquid or melt is around 1,000 degrees Celsius. Now, that temperature we reach just below the lithosphere. So at the bottom of the crust, lithosphere, it's around 1,000 degrees Celsius. And then going into the asthenosphere, we do get these temperatures where we can melt all rocks and potentially create our magma, which we do see in small amounts. But going down to this temperature, which is well above any melting point of any mineral on Earth known, you would think that the entire center of the Earth is all liquid magma because of the temperature. However, this is where pressure comes in. Pressure is that, that um, element or that part or component of the Earth's interior that we have to discuss in more detail because our planet is not just some ball of magma, ball of molten magma. It is a solid, mostly solid piece of rock. And that comes down to the pressure. So what is pressure? How we define pressure? Pressure is the force applied to an area. And the more force applied to an area, or the smaller the area, the larger the force, then we get the increased pressure. So if we're talking about pressure, there are many different units of measurement we can use. Um, kilobars, uh, pascals, there are newton meters, and there also is a one called an atmosphere. So one atmosphere is the amount of force applied to an area on the surface mainly. So it's basically calculated from the surface. It's the, it's the weight or the mass plus gravity pushing down from the atmosphere onto the surface. And it equates to, and the abbreviation is ATM. One atmosphere equals 14.6 pounds. Now, in America, we use pounds. We can also use kilograms or grams. But in this case, we're using pounds, OK? So in terms of pressure, we can look at, um, this is pounds per area. So it's pounds per square inch, which is abbreviated to PSI, pounds per square inch. So one atmosphere, so when you wake up and you get out of bed, you stand up, you are having one atmospheric amount of pressure on your body, which is 14.6 pounds per square inch applied to your body. Now, humans don't really notice that because we are, have evolved and we are used to this pressure and we have grown up with this pressure. So there's nothing different 
or new for us. It's just what we expect. It just happens like naturally. So 14.6 pounds. So when we go down deeper in the in the layers of, of the Earth's interior, well, how does that change? Well, the rule is that the deeper you go, so as depth increases, so does the pressure increase. Now, why? Simply because when you go down deeper, you have then overlying rock, which has its own mass, and with gravity pushing down, even on solid structure, gravity is still a, uh, a force applying to this, this area of rock, that the deeper you go, the more rock there is above you, and therefore the more pressure is applied to that area. So for our rocks, the pressure, how is it exerted on the rock? So how does it affect the rock? Affect or effect the rock? Well, if you take this rock, okay, and you bury it under the ground, let's say in the crust a few, a few hundred meters, what's going to happen, happen is the pressure uh, is going to be applied in all directions. Now, in terms of force, this is called confining. Stress. Now, stress is the force applied to an area, right? So, confined. So, it's being confined and it's been applied stress and force and pressure in all directions on the rock. But in terms of general pressure, we are looking at this term. And it is lithostatic pressure. So, litho or lithos. That is the ancient Greek word for rock. And static means it doesn't move. It's stationary. So there's no movement. So this rock could be a certain depth in the Earth's interior. It's not really moving. There's no uplift. There's no uh, change in its, its, its depth or its position. So there's, it's, there's the amount of pressure that is on that rock at that point in time without any movement. So on the left here, I had this rough diagram of the, the six main physical layers of our Earth's interior from the crust all down the inner core. And I put here the distance, basically the radii of the Earth, which is 6,371 kilometers, which equates to 6,700 degrees Celsius uh, of the temperature in the core. So the temperature is going to increase as we look at the geotherm at different rates based on the different densities and, and depths. And layers, but the pressure is is a an even greater increase. So the pressure on the surface is fourteen point six psi. So the pressure of, uh, applied to you is one atmosphere, which, which equates to fourteen point six psi. Now, if we go down deeper, so we go down to let's say uh, seven kilometers, which is about five miles, so maybe below the ocean ocean crust. Uh, lithosphere down that deep where the moho is under the ocean or just into the um, you know as far as we can drill basically pretty much on the continents we're looking at uh, 10,000 10,000 psi so I'm going to put it right here 10,000 psi so put it in context that's 10,000 pounds per square inch applied to that rock so a a metric ton is 2,000 pounds. We're looking at five tons of pressure being applied onto that rock at this depth. Five tons, which is incredible, only five miles down. Now, if we go down to 100 kilometers, the pressure increases exponentially. Now we're up to 100 kilometers, which is basically the... the um, the lowest part of the, the Moho, where under an uh, under a mountain range, but around here, looking at under 426,000 psi. So let's put that in context. Only going down about 70 miles down, okay, of that 4,000 mile journey down the center of the earth, you're now looking at pressures 
pressures of, you know, a jumbo jet. A jumbo jet is 400,000 pounds. The Statue of Liberty weighs 450,000 pounds. So you're looking at a jumbo jet pushing down on every square inch of that rock. So you keep going down, and the numbers just get absolutely crazy. So look at the, uh, the, the core mantle boundary right here at 2,700 kilometers down. You're looking at between 19 to 20 million PSI. That's some serious pressure. And then in the in the core, the center of the, 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 the core, which is a solid iron and nickel with trace elements, looking at a lovely bone crushing 52.5 million PSI. So even if we could find a way to get through the temperature difference, okay, of going down to the core, there's no way we have the ability to manufacture materials that can withstand 52 million psi, you know, on on that on that on that machine. So going down to the bottom of the oceans is tough. Going down through the through the earth's, earth's crust and different layers is exponentially more difficult. So as the pressure increases, so does the density density of the rock. From an average 3.3 grams per centimeter cubed at the uh, the crust lithosphere down to a lovely you know 12 to 15 grams per centimeter cubed in the in the core, and that's down to obviously the the pressure applied to the rock, and also depends on the composition. It depends on the temperature, okay, and it depends on the depth, obviously relating to the pressure. So the density of the rock is affected by these three or four different variables. The pressure is a very large part of that. So the last part is why doesn't this, these rocks melt at the higher temperatures over 1,000 degrees? Because of the pressure. This lithostatic, lithostatic pressure is forcing the rock in all directions, confined uh, pressure, and it's not allowing the thermal energy which relates to kinetic energy within the molecules, it's not allowing it to move. There is no, so even though the temperature can be at 6,000 degrees, there's nowhere for the atoms and molecules to move to, to go from a solid to a liquid in a phase change. There's no space, there's no space because of this lithostatic pressure, which is so great, holding the piece of rock in a solid, uh, formation. There's nowhere to really expand and allow that thermal energy to uh, move into kinetic energy with the with the molecules. So that's why, even though it's really hot in the center of the Earth and different layers of the Earth, that's why it doesn't melt because of the lithostatic pressure. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please subscribe, leave a comment, and look forward to other you've seen other videos in this series.